In this video, I'll compare press-on nails and the nail polish strips, and I'll put them through their real-life tests. Hi, my name is Masha, and I'm happy you stopped by. One of my viewers have asked me if I ever tried nail polish strips, and I have in the past once. I remember having a feeling of not really being impressed by them, but I couldn't quite remember why to give her a proper feedback. So I thought, what a great opportunity to try them again. In one of my videos, I've compared two different brands of nail stamping kits, and that video have been doing really well. So I thought to put those nail strips to a better test through a comparison video again. Nail polish strips is a relatively new nail trend that seems to be quite popular. Comparing two different brands of nail polish strips will be a great idea, but I thought what could be better? And then I decided to compare nail polish strips to press-on nails. Press-on nails been around a long time. Nails in seconds. Lee press-on nails in fashion colors. They're so popular and they're getting even better. So I'll compare new trend to something that's been around for ages. And I'm going to put those nails through the real life test by painting my house. Make sure to stay till the end to see how I compare them side by side. Plus I have been asking myself, am I wasting my time with all those gels and poly gels nails? Cause it takes so long, especially for a newbie like me. Or is it better to just get press on nails or nail strips and have no fuss about it? So let's find out. I wanted to get both products from the same place and the first place I thought of was of course Walmart. When I went on Walmart and I looked at the shelves, they were basically empty. There was barely anything in there. And I think it's because both of those products are very popular and they just go fast. I was going to wear strips of nail polish on one hand and press on nails on my other hand, but I did not want designs to be completely different. I didn't particularly need them to match, I just didn't want them to look completely out of place. Then I went to Ulta. Ulta was empty too, I don't know what's up with that. Perhaps I went on the last day before the shipment. By the way, I already made my choice and this is it. I know it's not a very exciting choice, but remember, I'll be painting my house with those hands. This kiss set of press-ons is promising a 7-day wear. All of the instructions are on the back of the package. I think most sets nowadays offer two ways to apply press-ons, either with the glue or with the sticky tabs. Both are provided in this package. It also comes with a tiny nail file and an orange stick as a cuticle pusher. Those press-on nails are pretty thin and could be pushed a bit under the cuticle. Each nail has a number on the back side of it to indicate the size. As I was going through sizes, I kept noticing that just about all my fingernails are in between sizes of the nail tips provided in the package. This might not be an issue for everyone, so I just picked whichever one seems to cover the nail, even if it's a bit too big. This package has 28 nails, two in each size, and 24 sticky tabs, and those are also numbered, which makes it easier to know which tab fits best. I've decided not to use them because to me it seems like a solution for short-term use, for like an event, but for long wear, glue is my choice. First I pushed my cuticles and filed free edge of my nails. After that I roughed up the surface of my natural nails for better adhesion and cleaned the cuticle area with this file and polished my skin around the nail with the same file. I wiped off all the dust with nail polish remover on cotton pad so it works like a dehydrator and wipes off all the dust and excess oil that still might be on my natural nails and I pushed my cuticle again. This type of prep is not necessary, in fact there is no mention of any kind of prep on the package, but if you want your nails to last, I think this is the way to go. To apply those press on nails, I squeeze some glue on the fake nail and spread it around to make sure I applied enough glue and added more when needed. After that, I applied glue on the natural nail and I placed the nail tip on top of my natural nail covered in glue 
slightly pushing it under the cuticle. If there's a bit too much glue, it will come out on the sides and you can just clean it off with that cuticle pusher that came in the kit. Those press on nails are curved a bit more than my natural nails, so the glue hopefully will fill up that space without any air pockets. Having empty space under the fake nail may allow water to get in and it's a perfect environment for bacteria to grow. I think the best way to avoid that is to apply enough glue and press the nail tip really good holding that pressure for about 10 seconds. Before pressing, make sure the nail tip is positioned straight and not crooked because it's impossible to fix without removing the whole thing, which most likely will damage the nail tip and there's only two of each size and this might take layers of the natural nail as well. I had a bit of the glue spill on just about each nail and since it's basically a super glue, it sticks to the top of the fake nail, leaving a spot, so I've decided to buff it off. The finished result is okay. The sizes that fit my natural nail create an inconsistent look. On my point and middle finger, fake nails look unproportional to the ring finger and the pinky. And of course they don't feel the same way nail extensions do, these feel like what they are, glued on plastic tips. But I got used to it pretty fast and stopped noticing it. Now it's time to open those nail polish strips. There are some instructions on the back of the package and also inside. I guess so if you're completely new to the product you'll know what it's about. This package also comes with a cuticle pusher and a tiny hand file. They said only has 12 stickers, let's hope they fit. But before I dive into it, I gotta remove what's on my left hand. This was probably the most heartbreaking nail art removal. If you want to see how I did those nails, you can find a link in the description box below the video. I did not remove all the material completely because my nails underneath are short and I wanted to have the same length on both hands. And I did not do a fill either, however I should have. But somehow I thought this would give an advantage to the nail polish strips. Instead, I just filed my nails until the surface was more or less even. I used that tiny cuticle pusher, well, to push the cuticles, and cleaned the area with the tiny file. If there isn't any dead skin on your nails, you don't need to do that. And of course I wiped off the dust. I'm ready for the strips now. Nail polish strips come in a sealed package and the instructions recommend to use them immediately after opening. I suppose it's because they dry out. Okay, so following the instructions, I have removed the clear cover and then I messed up a bit. I wasn't supposed to tear off the silver tab before peeling the polish strips off, but it didn't seem to matter all that much. So positioning the strip on nails was tricky. Once they're removed from its paper base, they no longer have any structure. The strip becomes floppy and it is sticky of course, which it makes it pretty hard to position it on the nail. I was trying to get it close to the cuticle and apply evenly on the nail but it wasn't really that easy. I didn't center it properly and on one side I had to stretch it to the cuticle which tore the strip a bit and on the other I had extra. Plus, it tried to ruffle up on the edges. When I got the whole strip on the nail, I folded down what was hanging off the free edge and filed it off. I don't know if you noticed, but I flipped the strip. The side that had the silver tab ended up on the cuticle area because proper cuticle side was too narrow and that's the largest size strip in the set. I don't think I have particularly wide nails, but that's what happened. The second nail should be easier to apply simply because I already done that once, but it wasn't. The strips don't seem to be wide enough and they don't really stretch, even though the product advises to do so when needed. Well, stretching them did not work. They tear and I did not enjoy the process at all. You know, there is something satisfying about applying nail polish. 
but it's a personal kind of thing and here I don't know I just didn't enjoy it at all there is also no shine to the finish just like with a regular nail polish so I thought to apply regular polish top coat thinking it might help with the tears but it didn't at least it didn't make it worse and remember how I said I should have filled my nails? Well, they're crumbling. I don't know what I was thinking. Let's not hold the look against the polish strips. They have nothing to do with this. While painting the house, I use gloves to protect my hands from the paint. And after getting some work done, more of my nails broke and I had to file them. You might want to ask why am I painting my house? Well, having fresh nails on. Well, girls gotta do what she's gotta do. Plus, this is what my walls look like before painting them. The next question you may have, Masha, why do your walls look so terrible? Well, here's the answer. I have three little wall artists that live in my house. Plus, I find it very relaxing, working with my hands. When I was done with them, I removed nail polish strips fairly easy with just nail polish remover. They did have an extra layer of glue under the polish, but it came off easy. Well, on the other hand, literally, I had lots of trouble. First of all, I didn't wear them long enough for the glue naturally to loosen up, so I had to soak them in acetone, file them, soak them, file them, and so on and on. I glued them good. And here's the bottom line for me, my list of pros and cons for both products. My pros for nail polish strips are you can achieve a very easy nail art without actually doing any art. I went back to Ulta on a different day and their shelves were full this time. They had so much, I kind of felt cheated of this whole experience. My nails could have been so much cooler. Nail polish strips do not require any glue or sticky tabs. They go on their own and I think that's great. There is no nail polish smell. They were very easy to remove, just like a regular nail polish. And there is no damage to the natural nail plate, which is also a huge plus. Now what I didn't like about them. This particular brand did not offer enough sizes. And if you'd like for me to test out any different brands of nail polish strips, comment below, otherwise I probably won't ever use them again. They tear easily and wrinkle. Keep in mind though that glitter polish is more forgiving than any solid color, so if any of them tear during application, glitter won't show it as much. They were difficult to apply. It seems like it should be easy, but it wasn't. Once a strip is removed from the base, it becomes floppy. In comparison to press on nails, nail polish strips offer no shape correction or length enhancement. Your nails already gotta look good on their own to make the strips look good on them. As far as nail polish strips go, it's a pass for me. I don't get the fuss about them. If you like them, please tell me in the comments section why. Personally, I'd rather spend that money on high quality nail polish that will last through several applications than this one-time thing. I think it's one of those things that looks pretty in the package, but once applied, they don't look nearly as good. But it's just my opinion. Okay, now on press-on nails. In contrast to nail polish strips, press-on nails can cover up whatever state your natural nails are. I do though encourage you to be mindful about using anything on damaged nails. If a press-on nail happened to pop off, well, it's an easy fix. I always carried with me remains of the package so I could fix a lost or broken nail quickly. Press-on nails have a nice finish. Not only you get nearly perfect shape, you can also have all the bling you like. This is very easy solution for fancy looking nails at a relatively low cost. However, press-ons have quite a few things I don't favor about them. And number one is the use of glue or sticky tabs. Most nail glues have toxic ingredients in them and tabs 
they just feel weird. I don't trust them. During the application, excess glue will spill out, messing up the whole finish. Glue under the fake nail may be patchy, allowing water to get under, which creates an environment for bacteria to grow. Press on nails can pop off potentially at a very awkward moment. Press on nails are quite thin and seem wide. They have to be certain width to cover the whole nail and also thin not to look bulky on top of the natural nail, but that makes them looking wide and flat. And last but not least point against the press on nails. They feel like wearing plastic on my nails and kinda cheap. Let's face it, good, solid and pretty nail extension make you feel like a queen. These did not make me feel that way at all. So me, personally, I'll stick to poly gels and hard gels. I like the result I get with them for long wear. This experience was valuable for me as I have discovered the whole new world of custom press on nails as well and will use what I've learned in my future videos. I had another idea on a video on press on nails. But after this experience, I'm not quite sure I want to do it, but if I get 100 likes on this video, I'll make another video on press-ons. And if you like this video or found it helpful in any way, please let me know by clicking the like button. Thank you for watching. Bye.